Good evening and welcome. I am Amirachi Ubani. Tonight, President Mamadou Buhari extends his leave following his doctor's advice to complete a series of tests. Popular musician to face a Dibia bow to pressure as he calls off his proposed mass protest, citing security concerns. The army situates a military battalion in southern Kaduna as part of efforts to improve security situation in the state. And the U.S. appeals court rejects uh, Donald Trump's administration's request to reinstate a travel ban blocked by a federal judge on Friday. We begin tonight in Abuja, where the presidency has announced that President Mamadou Buhari will not be resuming tomorrow, as early expected, and as contained in his letter to the National Assembly on January 19th before proceeding on vacation. This is because the president has now written another letter to the National Assembly informing of his desire to extend his leave in order to complete and receive the results of a series of tests recommended by his doctors. According to a statement issued by the Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the President, Mr. Femi Additional, the President, who had planned to return to Abuja this evening, has been advised by his doctors to complete the test cycle before returning. The notice has since been sent to the Senate President and Speaker of the House of Representatives. The statement adds that the President expresses his sincere gratitude to Nigerians for their concern, prayers and kind wishes. Meanwhile, a senior lawyer and rights activist, Mr. Femi Falano, has advised the presidency to do more in telling Nigerians about the president's health status as it did last year. Mr. Falano says Nigerians have the right to know and says the presidency started on a good note by informing the nation of the treatment of an ear infection last time. More information this time round will remove speculation and erase any form of rumor. Mr. Falano was speaking on our political program, Sunday Politics. Even under the Freedom of Information Act, um, right to health is supposed to be shrouded in secrecy. Even for that of the president? Yeah. But I'm saying now, henceforth, this situation calls for a review of the law. So that I won't be left guessing next time. And we're talking of the president. Many state governors go in and out of the country, some for a month or two, some for up to three months, without anybody asking any question, without any handover to their uh, deputies, you know. So, but I, I'm saying that with what we are going through now, because we can't just go on guessing, speculating about the health of the president or the governor of his state. We must get to, uh, we must join the civilized community. We must come to appreciate. Now, if you are going to a public office, you have no secrecy. No secrecy. Everything must be, must be on the table. It's for uh, the presidential and uh, presidency official to advise the president, to remind the president. Last, last year, you did inform Nigeria that you have an ENT, that problem. you have problems with your ears, which you are going to treat. This year, Nigerians are desirous to know what is, 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 is the problem. We, it's our duty. It's our right. And the president took cognizance of that last year when he disclosed to Nigeria what he was going abroad for. This year should not be an exception. Mm. And this is what has given room to a lot of rumors and speculation. Is there, which is, are totally uncalled for. Is there a maximum amount of time that he must be, uh, he, he could be away? No. And that is he why he be away for as long as he wants. Yeah, that is why we now have to look at the constitution once again, mm. as we did the last time in 2010. Mm. Yeah. Rights activist Femi Falano. Nigeria's foremost musician, Innocent Idibia, popularly known as Two-Face, has cancelled the planned protest later to hold on Monday, 6th of February. The singer made the announcement after his statement was released by the Nigeria police, raising concerns that hoodlums had planned to hijack the procession and disturb public peace. The protest, scheduled to hold in Abuja, Lagos and some other cities, was to call for good governance and demand an explanation into the economic downturn nationwide, amongst others. Dear Nigerians, you know, after due consultations, it has become clear
that the one voice Nigerian protest scheduled to hold in Lagos and Abuja on Monday the 6th of February is, is under serious threat of hijack by interests not aligned with our ideals. The point I'm intent on making is not what the life of any Nigerian. You know, the, I mean, it is in fact motivated by the need to demand a better deal for the ordinary Nigerian. You know, I therefore announce the cancellation of the planned protest. Um, we will share further information in due course. Um, I appreciate the massive support and I am convinced our voices have been heard. Um, may God bless you all and may God bless Nigeria. That was the popular musician Two Face who says his shelving plans to stage a protest earlier planned for tomorrow, Monday, this, uh, February the 6th. In the meantime, organizers and rights group Enough is Enough it says it will go ahead with the protest as planned. The police has, however, warned in its advisory that all the protest organizers should stand down because of the intelligence reports available to it. The police public relations officer, Mr. Jimo Moshu, told Channel Television that the advice for the different groups to shelve their plans is in the interest of peace. Police have the, uh, the, the, the backing of the Constitution to ensure that everywhere in Nigeria is safe for everybody, uh, whether somebody is protesting or not. Uh, the form of protest that can lead to infringement on people's rights and uh, the privilege that are enshrined in the Constitution uh, will not be allowed by the police. Uh, we are out on, on daily basis to ensure that every Nigerian is safe on the street. Uh, but if somebody uh, that's just coming out now, I'm just hearing for the first time that there's a group that said they want to go out and protest. The major one is the One Voice Nigerian protest. And based on the advice of the police, they heeded the advice and know that the protest may likely be hijacked. So if anybody is not going to take a venture of uh, going out to disturb the public peace, then police will not allow that. Uh, but protest can be in any form. It, uh, like I said earlier, it's not until when you go to the street and block the public highway from people passing. We will not allow anybody to take loss into their hands uh, in whatsoever form. Uh, in other news, as part of efforts to find lasting solution to the security challenges in southern Kaduna, the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tuku Baratai, has laid the foundation stone for a military battalion in Kafanchan, the headquarters of Jemma, local government area of the state. During the groundbreaking ceremony, General Baratai said the decision in the area is in line with the mandates of the military to protect the territorial integrity of the nation and provide internal security of lives and property of citizens. On his part, the Kaduna State Governor, Nasser al Rafai, expressed his gratitude, saying that this will help curb the security challenges in the state. The cup of violence in southern Kaduna appears to be filled as the state government and the military are putting heads together to find lasting solution. <coughs> and the answer is in presence. And that's what both parties are here to establish with a groundbreaking ceremony of a military base in Kafanchan. The chief of army staff is here to support the state governor and he's confident that this will bring an end to the violence that has disturbed the communities here. I had instructed all of them uh, to move into the forest, into the hills, uh, the valleys, uh, wherever these bandits are, to feed them out. And that's my directive. We have our special forces who are well trained uh, to go into any terrain and uh, operate. So be rest assured uh, we will do uh, the right thing. The state governor gives a time frame for the project with a promise that its objective of stability will be met. We promised that we will do whatever we can to persuade the federal government to have a military, a mobile police formation in southern Kaduna to enhance the security situation. I am pleased to say today that that promise is about to be fulfilled. But beyond that, instead of one military formation, the President, on the recommendation of the Chief of Army Staff, has approved the establishment of yet another one to be cited in Kachia local government. The people break into dancing with optimism that this will surely stop the killings and bring about the much-needed peace. The Nigeria Pilgrims Commission and the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria 
are planning to convene a national dialogue to entrench peace between the two major religions in the country. During a courtesy visit to the Hajj Commission, the Executive Secretary of the Nigeria Pilgrim, Christian Pilgrim Commission, Reverend Uja To Uja, called on Christians and Muslims to work together to strengthen cooperation between the Christian Pilgrim Commission and the Hajj Commission. I want it to be a genuine peace move that will enable Christians and Muslims to live together, practice their religion, encourage each other, and strengthen what they are doing and build a Vira in Nigeria. The great platform Nigeria has given us is something that must not be broken. And I believe that if we work together, there's no limit to what Nigeria will achieve. I think Nigeria is the only country that has the kind of baseline we have. And if we invest in this baseline, we are going to take the world. So when there is a will, the resources will come. We appreciate all the efforts different groups have made. But I want to think that many times what people say in the secret is different from what they say and do in the open. We want it to be a genuine peace move that will enable Christians and Muslims live together, practice their religion, encourage each other, and strengthen what they are doing and build a Vira in Nigeria. The great platform Nigeria has given us is something that must not be broken. And I believe that if we work together, there's no limit to what Nigeria will achieve. I think Nigeria is the only country that has the kind of baseline we have. And if we invest in this baseline, we are going to take the world. So when there is a will, the resources will come. We appreciate all the efforts different groups have made. But I want to think that many times what people say in the secret is different from what they say and do in the open. We want it to be a genuine peace move that will enable Christians and Muslims live together, practice their religion, encourage each other, and strengthen what they are doing and build a Vira in Nigeria. The great platform Nigeria has given us is something that must not be broken. And I believe that if we work together, there's no limit to what Nigeria will achieve. I think Nigeria is the only country that has the kind of baseline we have. And if we... Staying with security issues, 8,000 internally displaced persons who have fled Mafa, a Borno town sacked by insurgents, have found temporary shelter in an open space in Meduguri. Though unofficial, the camp is home to men, women and children who have suffered deprivation and hunger. However, the partnership between the state and some organizations appear to be bringing succor their way. Most internally displaced persons are familiar with food shortage and the discomfort that comes with leaving home in search for safer grounds. With barely enough to feed the family, parents and caregivers are less concerned about nutritional values of the food within their reach. The Muna Garage IDP camp is one of the unofficial camps within the metropolis, accounting for no fewer than 8,000 persons. We are not finding it easy here, and our problem is purely hunger. We do not need clothes or homes. We have access to Medicare, but the food is never enough. We all do menial jobs. Those who can't work send their kids to beg for food. When Boko Haram attacked our town, we fled and left our farms and came to this place. Now we don't have enough and we can't go back home because we are still scared. We did not bring anything when we fled home and we are here with our wives and children. The Borno state government has been partnering organizations to address specific needs of the overwhelming number of IDPs in the state. The latest partner has shown interest in providing rehabilitation and emergency nutrition centers for malnourished IDPs and the first beneficiaries are families at the Muna Garage Camp. During the week, we, in partnership with the Borno State Ministry of Health, we are going to be distributing the foods, the medication and whatnot to other communities, IDP camps, not just IDP camps, but communities that need the, the, the products um, around the state. Last year, children reportedly died of malnutrition and hunger in IDP camps around Borno State. Most of those affected are those rescued by the military from Boko Haram captivity, already incapacitated by hunger.
In part two after the break, Minister of Works, Power and Housing inspects federal roads in Anambra State as part of his tour of the southeast. Please join us again.